an awareness of this development. If you think of countries that are developed, they started like this in terms of skills and position. I want you to know too that the five point agenda of this administration, the number two agenda has to do with human cap uh, capital development. And that is where you fall in. That is where the youth fall in. So government has a lot to do with youth development. You know very well too that um, government cannot employ everyone. For sure. If you look at the situation that we found ourselves in, the recession, you see government is even finding it difficult to pay its workers. So it is incumbent on government to see that the youth are adequately trained. The youth find things to do instead of loitering about doing nothing. I know what that means. The saying that goes like this, the devil finds his workshop in idle minds, really starts. If the youth don't have anything doing, they become restless and they can find themselves into other vices that are not commercial. So government, it's government responsibility to take care of our youth. You know very well too, the youth account for 60% of any community for that matter. You can imagine what that means. If that constituency is not catered for properly, if the youth will embark on an uprising, it can bring down the government. You know that very well. Just last week, we had to spend three days trying to nip the good of youth that intended to go on a strike action. You know what that means. So, Youth will have to find something doing to take care of themselves, to take care of their families. And hence, um, you find students embarking on projects like this in schools. Just last week, I was invited to uh, an occasion in the Federal College of Education, uh, Pension. I had to send someone to represent me. It's very vital. You know, the par our parents, because of what we are going through, they cannot pay, they cannot meet our demands as youth. So it's, it's incumbent on us to find something doing to also help our parents. If you find something doing, a lot of youth are even paying their way in school. It's happening. Um, what I want to also say is, there is dignity in labor. Like the DG said, you know, a lot of people felt uh, skills acquisition and stuff like that was meant for people who are not intelligent. But the reverse is the case. If you learn a skill and you acquire a skill, you know that you use your brain to do that. You can find yourself in industry, you can uh, be trained to to become an engineer, and so on and so forth. So I think we were not properly brought up in the right sense of it. If you look at the developed society, in fact, in developed society, they, 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 they start to monitor people at a very tender age, maybe at kindergarten stage. They know your skills, and they start to monitor you right from that moment. Before you become an adult, you, you are already going places. In terms of skills acquisition. <laughs> Apart from that, we are quite uh, significant. Why am I saying this? If you are talking of sports, we are talking about the youth. Is that not so? Have you seen all men playing football? or any other sport for that matter. If they do that, maybe just to make people laugh, make exhibition and stuff like that. So, that is an arena that youth can be uh, uh, utilized. No wonder, uh, 
like the MC rightly pointed out, we are preparing for uh, the first just international marathon that has never happened before. And we're just, uh, maybe I may have to leave here because I'm hosting a meeting in my office towards that. The event is coming on the 27th of this month. I challenge you, those of you who are uh, athletes, who are into long distance races, I challenge you to come and register. It's only 1,000 naira. If you cannot avoid it, come to my office. And then we see how we can get along. I am proud of you. I am a technical man by background. Okay? Make your pardon. I'm a technical man by background, and I know what that field means to all of us. So I'm very happy that you've undergone this training. You go to the outside world and exhibit your skills. Government will be there to render its assistance as, as much as possible. And I think we are going somewhere. All right? I thank you for giving me this time to talk to you. I hope to be here another time to talk to you another part. Thank you so much and may the Lord bless you. To Honorable Daladi Man, uh, while you were talking, they were asking some questions. The same acts of goodwill message by the Commissioner of Women Affairs and Social Development, represented by Mr. Joseph Guaisan. Sir? The Director General, Industrial Training Fund, heavily represented my Honorable Commissioner, Youth and Sport, other members of the high table, uh, all other protocol duly observed. Uh, on behalf of my honorable commissioner, Mrs. Rufina Grumian, she has graciously asked me to apologize to ITF. She would have loved to be here personally, just like my honorable commissioner has said, because of other state engagement. We just received our Minister of Women Affairs. She was in the state day before yesterday. And they escorted her to Lafia, Nasarawa State. She just came back. And she had other issues to attend to. So we want to really apologize for, not, for her not being here. She has also asked me to thank ITF because they are our partners all this while. Recently, we graduated some trainees from our Women Multipurpose Center along Tapa Belewa Kotsi ITF. And we look forward to working more with ITF. And she has said she would have loved to be here, but because of the reason I have just spoken, she has asked me to apologize and to thank ITF for the wonderful work they are doing in order to empower our youth. And you know, right now, the change government are working towards empowerment of women, children, and youth. Reasons being that the uh, government cannot do it all. And they have replied that we should at least resort to Nigerian uh, uh, made goods. And when you are given the skill, you will embark on your personal uh, business. And that is how we will get to where we are going to. You remember Germany, Japan, and other countries that have develop and advance started like this. They went through recession too. So I will always appreciate and to appeal to our trainees that what you acquire at least is for you to go and give yourself and to maintain yourself. Stay away from luxuries for now. And if you do that one, that will go a long way to helping us to overcoming the poverty in our lives. On behalf of my honorable commissioner, I want to thank ITF and to say that we will all work towards empowering our youth in the country. Thank you all. This is uh, women and social development. I want to assure you that there are women amongst it. <laughs> if, if you came in and you listened and when you sat down you noticed, you hear that there are uh, little trainees that are with their mothers here. And so we are also incorporating the women. So. Let's put our hands together for the women that are here with us and have been part of this training. Some of them with their babies, some expecting.
So we thank you for being part of you. Yes, we have seen a lot of them <laughs> in our centers. Uh, we will get the goodwill message from our royal father here. After that, we will get all our stakeholders and we'll give you two minutes each as you give us your goodwill message so that we will round it up before Smeda will come up with your own uh, remarks. So may I at this time welcome the Gondagon branch of South, being represented by what head of uh, Leo, Da Jato. Thank you, sir. Let's put our hands together. I observe all protocol. I stand here to represent uh, the chairman of Shashina Ruler, Council Udanga, to be here present. But the reason that he's not here is we lost one of our mothers, Miss Nyamdare, but now, right now, they are on the burial. That is why he's not here present. I said what is supposed to have been said. But uh, the few pairs of first branch of uh, year 19, uh, 2016 industrial scheme, things like this, when we look uh, like China, the country is growing much because of scheme. These petty things that they normally produce, that sometimes we let Nigeria to go and buy them there, is what they are making, that is where they make their own money. But I thank God for all of you that uh, took your time for about three months to have this training. I pray that you will put it into practice. Because nothing is small. Your contribution, the little that you have learned, it will make Nigeria to grow. See the uniform that you wear. I love it so much. And I also have to thank uh, it's all for the growth of the country. And my prayer is what you have learned, you should put it into practice. So that other two will learn from you. By doing so, to make Nigeria great. For this I'm saying, God bless all of you. Amen. <laughs> we'll take uh, goodwill messages, and like I said, please, we'll give you two minutes, and if you have more than two minutes, maybe you'll pass it to the next person, so that uh, we keep, we want to close here as early as possible, so that we can have other things to do, even though this is another important one too. So, uh, we'll start with Relevant Technology Board. After Relevant Technology Board, we'll take a Standards Organization of Nigeria, and then Ola Hospital, and Apurimak. So, over to you, sir. My teacher taught me when I was in the teacher's college that there are three sources. One, you must work hard. Two, you must work hard. Three, you must work hard. <laughs> this means that if you work hard, you will have a breakthrough. Thank you for training the youth in Zato with the hope that you will do more. I want to make an appeal. I know the commissioner, two commissioners are here to the state government. If you can have 10 tens to the people from each local government, you go through the ITF to train, so that the ITF will also give us to train them. Let me say something small for the relevant technology board. We have many things to do there. It's a state organization. We train people in carpentry. We train people in uh, iron. That's steel. We train people even in leather. Those of you who went to uh, 
uh, Pet Fair will display our product. If you see the shoes that they are making there, it's terrible. <laughs> terrible, not negative, but positive. <laughs> I therefore want to say if the state government will mandate the local government to train 10, 10 of their people in relevant technology, and if the state also can train 100 in relevant technology, we will have progress in this state. Thank you, ITF. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, the government. Thank you very much. Thank you to ITF for this, uh, living up to this statutory responsibility. And to the trainees, uh, I want to say it has to be encouragement all through. You have acquired the skills, but that is not enough. You must put it to use. Now, when you start, it's not going to be easy because we deal with people that start up businesses in standard organizations. You're going to see, encounter a lot of things that will make you discouraged. But what I want to tell you today is that don't get discouraged. It's only when you keep the hope going that you get to the end. Those of you who live here, you encounter one problem, maybe you stop, uh, maybe start writing a cake in a bed, or you start doing something else. You will not become great. You will not become the fashion designer or the caterer that will be on uh, world class magazines. So I want to encourage you. I don't know what uh, the plan is on ground for your for your takeoff, is there any uh, sponsorship like uh, seed money? I don't know about that, but since the government representatives are here, the commissioners, <laughs> I will encourage that. Uh, I know that times are hard. We are in a situation from the mega source. Uh, I don't think it will cost too much to set up uh, a tailoring or a catering outfit at a minimum level. At least set up a criteria, some criteria, and then see how you can help some of the, the trainees to, to start. Because it's not going to be easy. <laughs> so once more, I want to say thank you for the great thing you have done to our state, for the great thing you have done to Nigeria, I see you, please keep it up and train more and more. Thank you. started already because what I'm wearing today one of them sold this for me as he was my baby. Um, I, I still want to stand with my brother there. From 2005 to date, Aporimak Onlus has trained over 15,000 vulnerable youth and women in Plejo State. What I want to tell you ladies and gentlemen that out of this number more than 70% of them are not doing anything today because they find it very difficult to start now. Um, I, on behalf of the graduates, I, I mean, we, are, we don't talk too much as trainers, but we understood from the experience of uh, the number of trainees we, we see. The government is here, I think from the office of the um, Ministry of Youth and Sport, the ITF should please tell the Mr. President, as he collects the money from the looters, 
I think we should use that money to build entrepreneurs. <laughs> went through within the three months. Uh, incidentally, we started this 11th of which month? 11th of July, and today is 11th of November. So it's exactly three months. <laughs> In this period. So quickly, I'll call a representative of the three threat areas that we uh, have here. Uh, Dajib, Daspan, Isaac, are you around? Please come forward. And the next one, Shim Goma. I want to say something. It's not easy. Since the day we start, we find it very difficult. Some of some of all this we take. And one of our one of my leather colleagues, whenever we come to the for shop, you will see him lying down on the planning machine. <laughs> if I do the do the smell that train that we have, to, every day when you see him by the window side is sleeping. Because he used to train from a distance, he trained from Utah to Federal Lopez here. So you can see, it's not easy. These are some of the challenges we pass through, very interesting. Because we learn some, some, some of our mates, some of my colleagues, I believe some of them don't know what we call tangential showing in woodwork. But with this training, they can be able to differentiate between tangential showing and cross cutting. And also, type of joints. Which you can be able to differentiate between tenno and mortis, and also grooving and so on. So with this, really we appreciate it. I think for finding it, finding us worthy to be trained under this scheme. And I go to the ITF DG. I wish the DG is here because we are his first son. When he was appointed as a DG general, we are we are in his room. So now we are giving back. Now he's supposed to be here too. Take good care of us. I mean, I want to say something. I want to say something. And to my dismay, it's not around. This year, they are not. I'm not, I'm not happy. Because I can't imagine, I can, I cannot, I can imagine my wife is giving birth and the husband is not there to take care of the wife and so on. So, what's this? Smeden and all our centers that trained us. Honestly, we are so grateful. We saw your passion. It was not just to train, but we saw your passion to see that we make something out of our lives. And we want to tell you that we will not disappoint you. Sirs, we have so many youths out there that want to make meetings with their life, but they lack people who will invest in them and trust them. That is why you see youths taking all they are taking and doing some of the things they do, because we need to survive. You have told yourself you will be. And one of the things I tell my people in the center is that none of us, you know, whatever you decide happens to you is what will happen to you. If I ask us today, this morning, you know, there was no demon that stopped you from wearing what you decided you wanted to wear. You know, and that is how you should be so serious with your destiny and your future. The way you decide that I will wear this and I will do this. And then it comes out that way by God's grace. That is how you can be, do and have whatever you desire to be. And we will not disappoint you. We hope that... You will not just let us go like this. Please, we want to ask the federal government, the state and all other parastatals and NGOs and all that. Please, the youth need support. We have so many ideas, better ideas than yours back in the day. We have upgraded ideas of things we want to do, but we lack the, the capital. And, you know, before we came here, some of us used to think that business is all about capital, capital. But when we were trained, we, we know that, first of all, you have to have an idea. And, you know, from that idea, you think big and you start small and you start now. So we are pleading that something small 
should give us, should be given to us. And then while we keep thinking big and working hard, so many big things will come. Thank you very much. Good morning, all. We stand on the existing protocol. I stand here on behalf of Garment Making and Purima. We want to, first of all, thank God Almighty for the opportunity to partake in this training. Uh, I will want to all start now. We have learned a lot for the period of three months that we went through the training. Sorry. And um, I can proudly say to our SARS here that these people you have trained will go a long way to make you proud. Just wait. We will call you and we will show you what we have made by God's grace. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and may God bless us all. Amen. Thank you. Representing the three tens. So after the count of three, one, two, three. Bosa, Bosa, Bosa. God bless you, God bless you. Uh, these are our trainees. Let me just tell you before I forget. Please, after you leave this place, go and hide your talent. The ground and bury it. Okay. Uh, the director general.